All right, so um, I know it's been a very long time since I've given an update, but uh, yeah, I thought today was a good day to do that. So quite a long time ago, uh, this motor was on another bike and it was geared or it was uh, chain driven to the cassette and I was able to switch gears and it worked pretty well in terms of what I was trying to do with that project, but that bike actually ended up getting stolen. Uh, luckily, the motor was not on it at that point. So I still have the motor. This is the same exact motor, 25cc Honda. Sorry for the lighting, it's kind of bright outside, but let's see if I can zoom in here. So this is the Honda GX25. There you go, four stroke. And um, yeah, I changed a few things on it. But I'm not sure if it actually helped at all. I just put this air filter on it. Uh, kind of made this like custom air box for the air filter so you can still use the choke, which is right here. But, um, yeah, so with this project, this is my main bicycle that I've had for a very long time. And I, uh, yeah, I just wanted to motorize it because I thought it'd be a good project to try and, um, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to ride it every day, but it might get me around town. I'm going to test to see how viable that is. Anyway, the idea with this project and the way I was using this motor was obviously to mount it directly above the rear wheel. Sorry again for the lighting changing, but... So it's directly above the rear wheel, only this time instead of driving the the right side, it's driving the left side. And the way I did that, like on this wheel, it's got a disc brake mount. So with the disc brake mount, I picked up this sprocket that mounts directly to the disc brake bolts. And so it's really hard mounting point. There's no slop. It's um, perfectly aligned. And then up here to the transmission, I did a lot of custom work on the transmission shaft area. So this multi-speed cassette is actually just off of an old mountain bike and it's mounted to a custom <laughs> uh, pretty jury-rigged adapter, but the adapter essentially half of a, of a threaded hub that I cut off the threaded part and there was a piece that is designed to fit on this transmission output it's like a triangle shape but it's got a like a um, it's got a hole in the middle but it has a flat on one side so it actually engages with a flat on this shaft so I cut that part off and I JB welded it to the threaded piece. And so that was able to go onto this shaft on this side. Then I just tapped a screw hole in the end to hold the piece on. This threaded onto it, and then it's really solid. It's perfectly aligned to the axis of rotation, so there's no wobble, there's nothing. So I'm really happy with the way it came out. When it's all driving, I've been driving it up and down the road. There's no, there's no pulsing like what was happening before with the other setup because that setup had a an adapter wheel that was kind of out of round, and yeah, it was just not aligned to the shaft to the axis of rotation. So it would pulse at high speed, but this one doesn't do that. It just nice smooth power, no pulsing. But, of course, I can't change gears. It only has one gear. But I think I found a pretty optimum gear ratio here. Um, it's running on a 26 tooth up here. And then the sprocket down here is a 17 tooth. So that's about a one point... Um, uh, a little bit over 1.6, 1.7... Um, 
gear, I guess, multiplication. So what that means is that the transmission, when it's spinning at its maximum speed, which is 294 RPM, because this motor gears it down by about 20. The motor is spinning at 6,000 RPM, 7,000 RPM, and the transmission's spinning at 294 RPM, so yeah, it's about a reduction of 20, something like that. Anyway, so when this is spinning at its max speed, it's turning this, which in turn is turning the wheel, and that achieves a max speed of about 33 miles an hour. I'm not sure if I actually got up to that speed, because I don't have a speedometer on this bike, but it did feel pretty quick. Um, so I'm pretty happy about that, and also something that I guess I anticipated, but wasn't sure how it would work out was the motor actually is not strong enough in this gearing to get to get you going very quickly from a dead stop. It actually takes quite a while um, from a dead stop, so what I do is I actually pedal it to get going and then use the motor to kind of take over at about maybe 12 miles an hour. And at 12 miles an hour all the way up to its max speed, which like I said could be 33 but I'm not sure if it is, then it's actually really pleasant to ride, uh, has plenty of power, and the motor doesn't sound like it's struggling even with a pretty good like headwind and a slight uh, slope. To the road I was riding on. When it does get, uh, when, the, when the slope is high enough, you do have to pedal to help the motor, but you can still maintain a pretty good speed. Probably, I would say, if I had to guess, you know, above 20 miles an hour up a sloped hill um, if you're pedaling. So it's a little bit more of a workout than obviously some motorized bikes where you can just go up a hill with a motor by itself, but I was fully prepared for that knowing that this little motor is only 25cc and develops only, I think, 1.2 horsepower. So, sorry, the video does not want to focus. This camera is really... It's not very good. Anyway, um, just wanted to show you what how this is all mounted up. So this bracket is sort of just light square tubing metal, steel, and I spent mm, about a day, day and a half putting together this mounting frame. I had the idea kind of worked out in my head, so it was kind of just getting around to it and doing it after all these, well I guess years it's been since I last worked on this thing. But anyway, it's actually finally working now. So this, this structure is fairly solid, I think it has a little bit of some give to it, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, but if I had to do it better, I'd probably just weld everything and make it nice and solid, which I will eventually probably do. Um, one of my other ideas for this project is to actually encase the entire motor structure in kind of a a wood uh, a wood covering to make it look like it's just a box back here and not actually a motor. In some states, uh, it might be illegal to have something like this that's not registered or licensed. So, you know, a wood covering would obscure it, at least not bring attention to it. Um, so I might do that. We'll see if I get around to it. But I am going to ride this around town, I guess, until I do get pulled over by a police officer. And we'll see if that happens. <laughs> If not, great. If it does, then I guess I'll have to do something, but, um, yeah, I really like this. I really like this setup. Um, something I added this morning was just a little kill switch. So you hit that little button right here, and that cuts power to the motor. Um, really simple to use. And... Yeah, if you have any questions, let me know, but I'm just going to start it up and show you how it runs. So, obviously, it's a pull start, so you reach around here. I might have to put on the choke, obviously prime it, a couple pumps with the uh, primer bulb, and then just starts right up pretty easily. Uh, it 
it's not too loud at all. I mean, it's not quiet, but it's also not loud. So, I don't know if I can actually show everything moving. But the throttle is up here, so the throttle is mounted to the handlebar. There's just like a an adapter brake lever. But um, let's see if I can do this. So so the bike wants to move because the clutch is actually slightly. I'm gonna kill the motor. So the clutch is actually, uh, the clutch spring needs to be replaced because I revved it when the, uh, when the transmission wasn't on, which you should never do because the clutch shoes, they, they swing out and then it stretches the spring and then once the spring is stretched, that's pretty much it. You ruin the spring. So I got to replace that. Unfortunately, it's really hard to find a spring for this motor just by itself. You have to buy the whole clutch. So... I'm going to look a little bit more, see if I can find a spring that's compatible, maybe from another uh, brand of weed whacker or something, because they all have similar clutches, but anyway, um, so that needs to be replaced, but yeah, it um, runs really well, I'm happy with it. This motor, it's not, it's not designed for this at all, but it actually performs pretty well. The only questions I have is how long this transmission is going to last because it is a worm drive. So I don't know if you can see it, but on this side there is a um, cylinder right here. So inside this cylinder is the worm drive. And then there's a big ring gear up here which drives the output shaft. But the worm drive is driven by the motor. So this is spinning at 6,000 RPM. Okay. Nope. So this is spinning. Sorry, there's a dog. My neighbor's dog. This is spinning at 6,000 RPM, which turns the gear. So there's a lot of friction. There's a lot of heat generated right here where these two gears come together. This transmission should have oil in it. Actually, I'm going to check that to make sure it does. But as long as it's oiled, it should last. Um, but Again, it's not designed for this. It's designed to be a rototiller, which is kind of like momentary strain, not constant strain of trying to keep a bike and a human moving at 20 plus miles an hour. Um, so this transmission might give out. We'll see. I guess when it does, then I'll have to figure something else out. But for the time being, it works. So if you're thinking about doing something like this, um, I would say go for it. It's actually works pretty well. Um, it's got good, good power, uh, transmission. I guess worm drives can be upwards of 90% efficient. Of course, until everything wears out. But, um, it's pretty simple, you know. Just the only th troubles I had was making this adapter, but... JB Weld is actually strong enough if you get the 5,000 PSI um, type of it, then it, it seems to be holding pretty well. I don't think it's going to break. I think one of the first things to break might be something else. Um, so that piece is pretty solid, and motor seems to be running good. Tuning issues all the time. Sometimes you got to retune it. Uh, I couldn't start it the other day, and I don't know why it was doing that. I took apart the carburetor. And I back together and it started up so can't really explain what was going on there but um, that's about it it's a good little get around town bike all right thanks for watching